I'm going to show you how to blend watercolour paint in this lavender step-by-step -step still life tutorial. So shall we get started? I thought it'd be quite nice to take you through the drawing stages of the pot. So I've got a central line here and I'm drawing an ellipse at the top with an HB pencil and a larger ellipse at the bottom and this all depends on your viewpoint. And what I'm doing now is just drawing the sides of the pot here. The central line is just for me to keep the pot symmetrical. So once you've got your pot, the top and the bottom curves there, you can rub out your pencil lines that you don't need. And I'm just sort of finessing there and drawing some of the detail inside the pot. When you're painting in watercolour, you don't want too many busy pencil lines. I'm just sketching in the back of the table here so the composition is really nice and simple. I'm just sketching in a few stems here just for some guidance because this painting is quite loose and I'm going to be spattering a lot of the lavender flowers. I'm just sketching in a few of the petals here and I will be using masking fluid to mask out some of the lights on the petals as well. So again, these this drawing here is just for guidance because as I say, this painting is gonna be nice and loose. I'm using rough watercolor paper. You can use cold pressed. It's 300 grams, nine by 12 inches. And I've got some washi tape around the edge there and I'm working on a watercolor block and that helps with any sort of warping that the paper might do ordinarily. I'm applying masking fluid wet on dry. I will put a link in the description below of a tutorial that I made all about masking fluid. But I've actually protected my little brush here by dipping it into liquid soap, that's hand soap, before I start using the masking fluid and that protects the brush and just rinse it all off afterwards and your brush should be okay. If you are worried about your brush, do use an old brush to apply the masking fluid. And if you don't have masking fluid, you could use white gouache or white watercolor paint at the end of the painting. And as you can see there, I'm spattering the masking fluid to get some random light effects as well. And I'm gonna allow my painting to dry naturally. Once the masking fluid is dry, I'm mixing up some background colors here, and this is where I'm gonna do some blending. So it's a puddle of violet and a little bit of yellow ochre. It's a little bit too much yellow ochre there, so I'm just putting a little bit more violet back in there. Plenty of water as well. I'm using my pipette to add more water. So the actual wall in the background is going to be a lighter shade. The tabletop is gonna be slightly darker. I'm using similar colors, except I'm using some burnt umber, ultramarine and violet to get these colours with a touch of Payne's Grey. It's just to have a sort of colourful dark grey colour, slightly thicker than the background colour so it'll be slightly darker. I'm wetting the background all around the pot here, the white pot. So I'm wetting over the flowers as well. And remember the masking fluid is dry. I'm using a large one and a half inch flat brush, but you can use a soft haired large brush to cover this area with water and let it soak in. So spend time wetting that background and tabletop and also over the flower area as well. I'm using my size 10 round brush to apply this lighter shade of the violet with the yellow ochre here, wet in wet. I'm avoiding the flower area but I'm sort of coming in here and there so you can see the background coming through the flowers so don't go over the flowers here just come in at different angles there wet into wet as you saw that I rinsed my brush I'm just using water now just around the flower area and just above the table there I'm just applying a little bit more paint here because I want the pot the left hand side of the pot to look lighter than the background and this will bring the pot forward as well well, but the light is coming from the left. And now I'm applying this darker wash, wet into wet on the tabletop, using my size 10 brush, being careful not to paint on the pot, but it does have masking fluid on there and I haven't wet it so it shouldn't bleed onto there. I'm carefully painting this area with slightly darker color, blending it into the slightly lighter color below there. Painting wet in wet makes blending so much easier in water color painting. Here I'm blending a slightly darker wash 
mixing this slightly thicker paint into the thinner paint there. What you don't want to do is put a wet wash into a drying wash because you're going to get all sorts of problems with back runs. So try to make the paint the same consistency or slightly thicker and you'll get some nice results with soft edges. What I'm doing now is I'm going to mix up some colours for the lavender flowers and I'm going to spatter wet into wet with my size 4 brush here. It's more of a blue violet so I'm using the violet with some ultramarine here. Don't worry too much if it gets in the background but you do want to sort of cover your pot which I forgot to do so I'm just putting my hand over it now to protect it and I'm, as you can see it's got a lovely soft effect there. I'm mixing up some more ultramarine and violet using the size 4 brush again just spattering a slightly darker creamier blue violet which kind of blends nicely with the background colour and also that lighter blue violet colour there and because it's slightly creamier you won't get any back runs there you'll get a nice soft edge. I'm using my bristle brush here with slightly creamier paint again going quite close to the lavender there and spattering by rubbing my finger against the bristles there to spatter some more of that blue violet damp into damp. I've mixed up here some of the violet and a little bit of yellow ochre. I've taken the excess off on a paper towel so my paintbrush doesn't have too much liquid on it. So this is very damp paint. If it runs too much, as you saw there, take more excess liquid off on a paper towel. And I am blending into the table surface here a darker tonal value, painting up to the pot there so it looks nice and light. Remember that's the light side, the light's coming from the left so I want to make that tabletop look a bit darker to really bring out that pot and I'm actually painting up to the reflection there which is lighter as well and this is all damp into damp so it's a great way of using blending techniques to create a soft darker edge against a lighter edge here. I'm lifting off with my size one and a half inch flat brush which has been cleaned and then the excess water taken off to it so so it soaks up some of this paint here to create a light look and I'm sort of blending as well so I don't get any hard edges. Make sure your brush is really damp, not too wet, otherwise you're going to introduce more moisture and you may get back runs later. I'm also blending on the left hand side here, I felt there was too many marks so I'm blending away some of those brush marks there, feathering it with this damp brush. Again, make sure there's no moisture on your brush and you may want to practice this technique as well. So I'm painting a little bit of dark here on the horizon and then softening with a damp clean brush blending it in to the lighter area on the table there. Again, a good way of using blending techniques so you don't, the paint doesn't run too much, is to wipe the excess off on a paper towel. It really controls how much moisture is on your brush so you don't lose control. So you can paint for a bit longer. A really good tip for blending technique is to make sure there is a sheen on the paper. Once that sheen starts to go, you really need to stop painting otherwise there is a danger of cauliflowers and blooms. I'm blending a little bit of dark here on the right hand side of this reflection as I can see in the photograph and then blending this colour so it gets lighter to the left hand side. I'm lifting off um, the right hand side of the table here with my flat brush. I rinsed it and I wiped off all the excess water so it soaks up the paint and I'm blending again on that left hand side because I can see a few marks there and just lifting off a little bit more light. Again, all the time, keep rinsing your brush and wiping it on a paper towel so it doesn't introduce any more moisture. I'm just lifting off a few more lighter areas in this reflection with my damp, clean, flat brush. I've mixed up a little bit of green paint here. I'm using phthalo green light. You can use a little bit of sap green or hooker's green. I'm using my size 6 brush, working wet on dry. Just just painting some of the stems and foliage at the bottom of the lavender there um, at the top of the pot and just putting a few stems through the flowers there damp into damp. Don't worry if it's dried off too much, just make sure your paint isn't too wet. 
So I've allowed my painting to dry and I'm wetting the surface of the pot here and I'm going to paint some shadows on here, wet into wet and damp into wet and then damp into damp and blending as I go. So while the water's soaking into the pot there, I'm mixing up a little bit of the violet with some ultramarine and a touch of Payne's grey. You can use black as well. It's a really nice dark neutral colour. I'm using my size 8 brush and I'm starting off wet in wet. As you saw there I've not actually painted to the right hand side of the edge, I've left that unpainted. I'm going to blend that later. So I've just put the darkest colour there first of all. I've rinsed my brush off and I'm just sort of blending the damp brush into that dark colour there. Rinsing my brush again, just taking all the excess water off and now blending that very sort of lighter shade to the left hand side where it's lightest and just sort of finessing that blending rinsing you can use a paper towel to take the excess off and I'm doing the same on the right hand side don't worry too much about the right hand side that's a lighter tone what you do want to make sure is that that your left hand side is almost white and you haven't actually got any paint there so you can lift off with a paper towel as well I'm blending on a darker tonal value here I've added some more of the Payne's grey here painting damp into down with my size 8 brush so it really has got a dark tone and blending some of the darker tonal values underneath the rim or the top of the pot there and blending with a damp brush as well again make sure your brush is damp and not too wet and I'm actually lifting off with a paper towel now to make sure I haven't lost any of my white and light of the left hand side of the pot so it's a good idea to allow the painting to dry again once the painting is dry, what I'm going to do now is I've mixed up some of the violet and ultramarine. You can use ultramarine and permanent rose or alizarin crimson. And I'm going to paint some of the petals wet on dry. I've added a little bit of water to that. So this is a sort of mid-tone. I'm just going to paint some of the petals here wet on dry. And then I'm going to mix up a slightly darker colour, same colour though, I'm using just thicker paint. And that's the ultramarine and the violet again. And I'm going to paint that damp into damp and just paint some darker accents in there to really bring the lavender flowers to life. So it's a good idea to allow your painting to dry again. I'm working on the darks here, wet on dry with my size 8 brush. I've mixed up some of the green and violet together, painting wet on dry at the bottom of the stems there and just to create some really lovely darks adding a little bit of ultramarine and violet now and painting some of these petals wet on dry here and there really to make them sort of bring them to life and to create some depth in the painting here remember there is masking fluid there so some of the lights will be reserved so don't worry so you can be a little bit free and try to vary the marks as well using the tip of the brush flicking and sort of don't have them all looking identical because it will look a little bit flat and just enjoy it. I 
I've mixed up some darker green here with the violet and the green and I'm just painting some stems and darks at the bottom there wet on dry just to create a little bit of darks and details I've mixed up some Payne's grey here and the violet and I'm just painting the shadow inside the top of the vase here or the or the pot rather and I'm using my size 8 brush working wet on dry and this really does bring the painting to life and I'm just sort of bringing some of that dark up into the stems and foliage there as well just to sort of blend those colors through remember in watercolor painting less is more so don't be tempted to do too much just create that impression so excuse my hand there but I'm just using the tip of the brush and pulling up and blending this dark color into the lighter foliage and flowers there still trying to keep lots of my light as well and I'm actually going to use the tip of the brush there and paint some of the stems there using the green with a touch of violet there not too many and certainly not as many as there are in the photograph I just want to create an impression so I'm just sort of painting a few of the main sort of flower stems there and just pushing the rest back by not painting them I'm blending some of this dark color here with some water just sort of blending it into the sort of coming up into the middle of the flowers there not too far up it's just to sort of blend so I'm going from dark mid-tone to lighter the flowers there and I thought it'd be quite nice to spatter some of the violet color it was actually to stop me from overworking as well I've just sort of added a bit more water there tapping the middle of the brush there firmly I will put a link in the description below of a video I made all about spattering for those of you that are struggling with spattering or want to know a little bit more about it do try to cover your white pot <laughs> I didn't do so there but I've been practicing spattering for a few years so I managed not to get any on there but I'm just sort of spattering here and there to create movement and texture and some darks there and just to make it look fun but also to stop me from overworking I think it's time though to allow my painting to dry again so I'm removing the masking fluid just make sure your painting is dry I'm using a paper towel but you can also use a putty rubber or a plastic eraser whatever you find to hand that works for you once you remove all your masking fluid what I'm going to do now sometimes you get a few dodgy areas I'm just sort of tidying up here some of the darks at the top of the pot here using my size 8 brush with some of the Payne's Grey touch of burnt umber and some of the violet there so you're still creating some harmonious colors there and I'm just tidying up the edge there still using my size 8 brush finishing off some of the final details here I don't know if you're like me with masking fluid, but sometimes I do overdo the masking fluid. So I'm just, again, tidying up with a very sort of thin wash of violet there with a touch of yellow ochre. I'm also using some of the previous shadow colors. So you could use the violet with the burnt umber as well. I've got lots of water on my brush there and I'm just, again, blending um, the water with that color there just to make it disappear into the shadow there so you don't get any hard edges. A way to avoid hard edges is just as you saw there use clean water and work from the outside the sort of light area they're in so you can just disguise and smooth away any edges or dark paint there what you don't want to do is have a dirty brush because you'll end up with a hard edge somewhere so I'm just smoothing out the edges there with clean water and finessing as I go so I've left the bottom part to last really it's where the pot is resting on the table there is a dark shadow there so don't be afraid of the dark I'm using some Payne's Grey violet and some burnt umber again painting wet on dry with my size six brush trying to breathe as well because it can be quite scary something like this so take your time and the worst comes to worst just wet that area um, with some clean water and lift off so what I'm doing now is I've just diluted my brush and I'm just painting wet on dry underneath a softer sort of lighter dark shadow there rinsing again with my brush I should have used clean water there there, but I just want to blend and soften this edge here to make it disappear into that reflection so again you don't have any hard edges there just blending away as you see I can um, I'm doing there so that I'm sort of bringing it down so it disappears so you don't have a immediate dark with a light it sort of graduates downwards so I'm just sort of softening that right 
outside edge there just with a very dilute shadow color there so you haven't got that really light edge there and I'm just I felt it was a little bit clumsy here it's a bit sort of blocky so I'm just sort of softening that there as well with a damp brush and then lifting up with my paper towel so it's a bit lighter there I'm just going back up here just to add a little bit more water in here and just to soften that edge getting everything smoothed out a little adding some darks right at the bottom of the foliage there using the violet you can use violet and burnt umber or even burnt sienna with some Payne's grey just for some more darks and details I'm adding a touch more dark here really sort of to finish it off to make the pot look like it's sitting on the table and creating a little bit of shadow there where I had removed the masking fluid there was some excess white so I've just used a very very thin violet just to sort of glaze over them so they don't stand out too much but still leaving a little bit of white as well and I'm using this very dilute color and just stippling some more more lighter tonal values here and there. So I'm removing my washi tape now to reveal a really nice white border. It really presents your watercolour paintings well, especially if you're not going to frame them. It's quite nice if, you're, if you've got a little portfolio you're keeping all your work, but also it's really good at framing it and it gives you time to assess to see if you need to do any more to your painting. I've missed out one very key area. So I'm just looking at this now and I've realised I haven't actually painted the cast shadow of the pot on the right hand side because the light is coming from the left and there is a soft cast shadow so I'm going to include that now. So I'm painting this wet on dry. I thought it'd be quite good just to draw a soft outline of this with my HB pencil especially for those of you that are worried maybe about painting a shadow so you've got something to work with here so I've just drawn it directly underneath the pot and a little ways up on the right hand side but um, it's really really small I'm just diluting now I want a sort of blue shadow color so I've mixed up starting with some of the violet and some of the old colors here I've added a bit of brown I wanted to sort of make sure it wasn't too bright shadow are more cooler and they sort of um, recede so I'm adding a touch of ultramarine now very very watered down so I've really I've got ultramarine a touch of burnt sienna or you can use burnt umber touch that violet color and lots and lots of water and I'm using my size 8 brush working wet on dry really loading that brush as well make sure you've got plenty of paint and I'm just really filling in that outline that I painted with the HB pencil as you saw I'm just coming directly underneath the pot there where I painted that darker shadow and then working my way round what I'm doing now is I'm just dropping in a slightly darker color I think I had a bit of Payne's grey and violet left on my palette I'm dropping that just at the edge of the pot on the right hand side where the cast shadow should be a little tiny bit darker and as the shadow pulls out it gets a little bit lighter and that way it looks a little bit more 3D as well. What I'm doing now is I'm rinsing my brush and I just want to soften the outside edge. You don't have to do this. Um, in the photograph it's quite diffuse that shadow so I thought I'd show you how to do that. So you basically work from the outside and then come in with a clean damp brush just to soften away the shadow. You don't want to start with the shadow and work out because you'll just make the shadow bigger that way. So I'm just softening again just to finish off. Remember less is more but I think I'll leave it there for now. I'm removing the painting um, from the block here, the watercolour block. There's a little gap there and then you just sort of gently pull it all the way around. You may want to use a palette knife for that as well. So here is the finished painting with the cast shadow. For those of you that may be thinking of framing your work, I thought it'd be quite a good idea. I've got two L's here. They, it's a mount cut up into two L's and sometimes I use them to sort of home in on the painting. Sometimes you may lose some of your painting but it's a great way of looking at your painting to see if you'd like to frame it and it really does look different in a mount so I really recommend that and here is the finished painting. I really hope you've
you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my watercolour channel. For those of you that would like to learn more about watercolour painting, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to ad-free tutorials, exclusive tutorials and downloadable sketches. Details about that can be found on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.